his presence among us. If you're able, please stand. Thank the Lord for his presence and his blessings. Thank the Lord for all that he is doing in our lives and what privilege it is for us to be here today. Yeah. Fellowship one with another to give praise and thanks to the Lord for the blessings which he has provided to us. Uh, I'll make a few comments in a few moments, but uh, I have to share with you today, I am different. Uh, I love your pastor uh, here at the Apostolic Road, but I'm different from him. Uh, I love grace and truth, but I'm different from him. Uh, I love Apostolic Faith Church in Edison, I'm different from her, her. a lot different. <laughs> and uh, Mount Zion has spent a number of days over at the, in the Plains, and I'm different from Elf Bentley as well. But I, I thank the Lord for all of us because the Lord is showing us the way. Yes. Amen. Amen. He is opening doors for us and making provision for us yeah. that we don't really comprehend. <laughs> the other thing I am is emotional. And especially when it comes to serving my God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah.
thanksgiving to the Lord is that he was given me an opportunity during 2016 uh, to have served the Bethesda Worship Center for 20 years as pastor. And I want to thank those who have come from Bethesda for being here with us today. And I would uh, ask for you know, a rousing applause, a shout of joy, uh, and all those kinds of things, but I don't know that that's appropriate in the house of the Lord, particularly when he is sending the message that he is sending us today. Uh, and I would ask you just to rejoice with us because of what the Lord is doing. I'm grateful for the blessings of the Lord, and as you give attention, uh, those who may want to be seated, you can uh, free to see you. sit down. Let me also share with you, you don't have to stand because that's what everybody else is doing. If you want to sit, sit. If you want to stand, stand. But uh, don't act something that you are not. Uh, be truthful. The Lord knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. Our former pastor used to say that there was a young man that he was acquainted with was standing, as he put it, over there. And uh, he, a request was made either to stand or to sit. I can't remember which it was in terms of detail. But the young man did the opposite of what he wanted to do. And he said that I'm going to, I think it was stand up, but I'm sitting down on the inside. <laughs> We need to be honest. We need to be honest. We need to hear the word of the Lord. So if you would, give attention to the reading of the word. Psalm 42, as the heart panteth after the water flows, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, day while and night. they continually say unto me, where's your God? There are people that you witness to, that you live before, that you walk around with, who ask, where's your God? In 2 Peter chapter 3, the word of God says, there are going to be individuals uh, who are going to mock you. They're going to slander you. They're going to say all kinds of things. Uh, and it says, well, where's the promise of his coming? Where's the promise of his coming? You said that he was coming soon. Uh, how many of you believe Jesus is coming soon? Amen. All right. Uh, I believe he's coming soon. I can't tell you the day or the hour. And even if I were to try to guess at it, we're told don't do it. That's right. Amen. Don't do it. That's right. Because we don't know. Amen. And we ought to speak the things that we know. Yes. We know. Amen. 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 Now, if you don't know the word, there's a way to learn the word. Amen. 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 Go to Bible study. Amen. 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 Read your Bible yourself. Right. It's not that thing that's sitting on the coffee table that needs dusting. If, if, if that's the way it is in your home, then dust it off real quickly and start reading. Uh, I carry with me most of the time a read through the Bible uh, template, so if you need help, I can provide it for you. Amen. I can give you what you need in that regard. There are people who are going to say, where's your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept holy day. I went to church, is what you say. I went with the rest of them to church. The question is, what impact did church have on you? Did it transform you? Did it help you at all? Did it do anything for you? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. I was asking the Lord, what should I say in this message today? And for weeks, the Lord sent me one word. And that was hope. 
O H O P E, hope. And hope is something that we're going to talk a little bit about today. And I want the blessings of the Lord to shine in our hearts. Verse number 5, verse number 11 in the same text. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Amen. And my God. Psalm 43. As you look at verse number 5. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. You may be seated. Hope. Hope is something that we need to give attention to. Is there reality in what we are doing here today? Amen. How many of you have come because your pastor asked you to come? The car or the bus or the man was moving this direction and you didn't want to be absent from that. You wanted to be a part of the group that was coming, so you came. Right. Or did you come because your soul is disquieted without you? You're concerned and you're discouraged about the condition of the world in which we live, and you want to see change. You want something to be different in your life. You want the glory of God to manifest in your soul, and you are here because He has drawn you. Knows the thoughts and intentions of your heart. I, oh, you, yeah. I have to remind you from time to time. <laughs> because we forget. Oh, yes, we forget. Yeah. How many of you have ever written something down and you put it in your Bible and you forgot what you wrote down? The only thing that you remember is I put it in my Bible so I can go back and get it when, wow. when I need it. Anybody like that? I have notes all over my Bible. Posted notes, uh, interjected notes, things from Bethesda, things from the community, things from everywhere else. Because I don't remember everything. Amen. Some of you may have gotten the idea that I'm not as young as I look. Given the bio that I shared with you a little bit ago, uh, but I'm a young man. Bless you. September the 1st, I had surgery to remove, uh, and they called it a, well, I don't want to get into that, but they <laughs> removed a substantial portion of my rectum, uh, and they took out cancerous tissue. The doctor's report several weeks ago was, there is no evidence yeah. of this. Without hope. 
So hope is a positive feeling about the future or something that you want to happen. Amen. Psalm 38, verse 15 says, For in thee, O Lord, do I hope. Thou wilt hear, O Lord my God. When we know the will of the Lord and we're asking him for his direction and his guidance, he provides us what we need. How many of you believe that the end of the world is soon at hand? I'm going to ask you to vote on your feet. How many of you would stand and say, I believe the end is coming? Now, I recognize that not everyone stood, and I understand that, because not everybody believed. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. If you think that the end of the world is coming, and you have not made yourself familiar with what the Bible says about end time, then you are short shrifting your life. My God. I was doing some reading this past week about an atheist who married a Christian woman. And I said, okay, Lord, I hear you. You're, you're continually telling me that we don't do the things that we want to do our way, but they're done your way. Amen. Have any of you ever said that I'm not going to do something? Oh, and God. it was related to your service for the Lord. Or I'm not going to go to church because I'm tired. I'm not going My to do God. this. I'm not going to do that. And shortly thereafter, you found yourself doing it anyway. <laughs> Lesson, lesson, lesson. When we come to the Lord, we don't make a decision to serve Him on our own. We are drawn to Him. Yes, we are drawn by Him I to do. Him. Yeah. And anybody who attends the Bethesda Worship Center will know where I'm going on the next scripture. Romans 8, All verse right. 28. All All right. Right. And we know yeah. that all things work together yeah. for yeah. good to them who love God. According to his purpose. Whether you like it or not, whether you think you have made the decision or not, you're called according to and motivated by his purpose. You might be sitting on a bar stool. You might be shooting up in the gallery. You might be smoking your head out and full of nicotine and can't get up nicotine because you just like it or you can't get rid of it. You're still called according to his purpose. Come on. Go ahead. I've learned some things over the years when I've been in the church or I've been around the church. And, and I've been around the church for 73 years. Amen. Amen. My father was a preacher when I was born. His mother was a national evangelist before I was born. My grandfather on my mother's side was a preacher before I was born. So I've grown up around yeah. the church. Oh. I didn't say I grew up in the church. I grew right. up around the church. Yeah. There are some things that I know about. That's why I say you may sit down or you may stand whatever your will is, your desire is, because I've been there. I've done all that. I've acted the pious young man who was doing all the things that I was supposed to do and acting the way and I was acting a lie. My God. So I know it's possible. And I know how easily it's done. But the Lord has drawn me and he has given me hope. He has given me hope. Martin Luther King said, and since this is Black History Month, I am African American. For those of you who didn't know, uh, I, I've had some uh, other pieces of me along the way. My mother, my grandmother on my mother's side was a Cherokee Indian. Amen. And she was put out of her house because she was a Cherokee Indian. Wow. Uh, but that's another thing. So I've got the blood in me. 
Right. Uh, I just look like I'm African American, but Martin Luther King said, we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. All right. Come on. And there was a knowledge that he had about what God was able to do in a life that he was wanting to share with individuals so that we would know what the word of God tells us. Sometimes we want to do what uh, Jesus would do. We need to know what the Bible says. What does the Bible say? Psalm 39, verse 7. And now, Lord, what wait I for? Oh, what is it that I'm looking for in life? What is it that I'm trying to find out in life? And I can tell you, I have done many, many things. Uh, I have experienced some things that a lot of people haven't experienced. If I had an opportunity and I was sharing with Pastor Chan, don't read the whole bio. And this was the abbreviated form. Uh, it could be many pages because I had a lot of experiences. The Lord has blessed me. He has done things for me that just blow my mind. Yeah. I praise him for what he has done. Yeah. Yeah. But I know that my hope is not in the things of this earth. Yes. Yeah. My hope is Come not on. in the successes of business. Right. I worked 26 years for Kraft Foods, and I had some wonderful experiences. Uh, uh, among, them, among them, I earned six figures on an annual basis. My God. Hear you. Wonderful. I could do what I wanted to do. For 21 years straight, my wife and I enjoyed Maui. Wow. For one, two, or three weeks, depending on what year you come. We had some wonderful experiences. I had business success, national notoriety for some of the things that I've done that I found out that my hope was not in progression. My hope was not That when the Lord says do something, do it. <laughs> oh, yes. Do it. Oh, yes. If he's got something for you to do, it's his will. It's That's his right. purpose. Yeah. It's his plan. Yeah. And he is yeah. supreme. Yeah. He is supreme. Yes, Lord. He is supreme. Hallelujah. And we need to know that he is that God. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the issues are, no matter what the world is like, the Lord has a purpose for all of us, Amen. and Come he on. wants us Come to on. find that purpose and live in that purpose. Yes. In a world that's filled with tension and uncertainty, violence, and confusion, we must know what it is we believe. Amen. The new president won't change the conditions of this world uh, in a favorable way. Amen. I believe the Lord allowed President Trump to be the president. Amen. In a divine country. Amen. 
Amen. And he's going to look like a savior. Oh, my Lord. Come on. He's going to look like a savior. But we don't need to be sidetracked and miss what the Lord is wanting us to do. Amen. Economic reform won't permanently impact our lives. That's right. Some of us are rejoicing because things are changing for the better. The stock market has been up every day this past week, and in some instances, over 100 points. Things are turning around. But let me tell you, Paul told us many, many years ago, yeah. things are going to get worse right. Right. and worse. Right. They aren't going to change positively for us. Then what is it then that we're going to have to do? If in this life only we have hope, Come on. we are yeah. at all men most miserable. More to life than the stuff you experience. Hallelujah. Come on. How badly things are going for you. You may not like your parents. Uh, I was almost going to say young people, but you may not like your parents. Amen. You can be a witness to them by showing them. Love. Love. Amen. Uh, yeah. If you are not here for Amen. the 10 o'clock segment, you missed it. You missed it. Amen. You missed it. Because we were taught about love. Amen. Eight areas of love. Yes, sir. Eight categories of love. Yes. And your parents fit into some of that. Some of you don't like your boss. Oh. Mm. Yeah. And when your boss says do something, you say mm. <laughs> and then you think, I want to eat next week. So I do it grudgingly. I may not do it with my mind. But the Bible tells us everything that you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. Yes. It is a testimony to what you are and who you are as to how you live and what you are doing in your life. Social changes will not make things better. And I can tell you for 26 years, I worked at changing corporate America. I had some success, but I left corporate America because I saw the Lord's handwriting that said, get on out now, because things are going to change. And they have changed drastically. I won't get into that. Sidebar, if you want to know some of my insights, I'll share them with you. Political harmony won't affect the kinds of changes that this world needs. Oh, right. The transformation that we need is in Christ Jesus. Amen. We need to declare the gospel of Jesus yes. Christ to the world. Yes. We need to tell everybody yes. that we need everybody that we encounter. Jesus is coming yes. soon. Yes. And Jesus loves you. Yes. Yes. Amen. I started off by saying there was an atheist who married a, a Christian woman. And she impacted his life by inviting him to church. The first church she invited him to was on their wedding day. Let's not judge. Let's not judge. Let's just hear the facts. Let's just hear the facts. He was a philosopher. He was a man who did not believe God. He was self-described, and it's in my notes somewhere along the line, self-described. He was ardent against God. He didn't believe God existed. But Hebrews chapter 11 says, if anybody is to come to him, he must first believe that God yeah. is, yeah. that God yeah. exists, yeah. that God is someone that we're dealing with. You say, yeah. someone, I thought God was a spirit. Yes, he is. But he is someone that we are dealing with. He, he came to us. Philippians chapter 2 says his name is Jesus. Hello. He took on the form of man. He came into the world so that we would know how to live and that we could live a clean, holy, and prosperous life yes. in him. Yes. Now, because 
we know that God is able. Uh, this woman kept inviting him to another experience at church. And he went a few times. The Lord put him in a place where the pastor told good stories, uh, engaged the congregation, had an intellectual discussion with them, which met his need because he was inquisitive. He wanted to know things. And the Lord began to move on him and began to teach him that there is a God. And he realized creation exists. Because there's a God. Amen. The powers that flow in the world exist because there's a God. Amen. Amen. He hasn't fully given himself to the Lord, but his life has been impactful. And he has written to the extent that some of the stuff that I used to believe, I don't believe anymore. Hallelujah. I don't believe it anymore. Now, you might say, well, Pastor, why are you sharing that story with us? Does it make any sense? Yes, it does make some sense. Don't give up on the one that the Lord has sent you to. Amen. Oh, come on. Well, that's good. We don't know what God's timetable is. Amen. We don't know how he's going to work it out. Amen. Trust in him. Amen. Some won't make it. That's right. I got it. Some won't make bless it. Bless bless but if you do the work that you're supposed to do, Hallelujah. you're going to be blessed. Yes, Lord. You're going to be blessed. Romans chapter 8, verse 24, verse 25. For we are saved by hope. Hey. But hope that is seen is not hope. For yeah. what a man seeth, why does he hope for? Yeah. About 10 years ago, I could do what I wanted to do financially, but that's changed. And this year, we're hoping to enjoy our 50th wedding anniversary with another experience to Hallelujah. Now, I'm hoping that that will take place. I already know what the costs are. And I've been counting the costs. Amen. And I've been putting money aside so that the Lord will help us, if you will, uh, go back and, and have what may be our last opportunity. Uh, I'm praying that the Lord will come between now and then. <laughs> not, not that I can consume what's in the bank, uh, but that I can be in his presence. Amen. Because there is a passage of scripture, if you got your Bible with you, I'm going to ask you to open it to 1 John chapter 3. Yeah. Uh-oh. 1 John chapter 3. Behold what manner of love, we're talking about love, Come on. Uh, the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Hallelujah. If you want to know what's counterfeit, if you want to know what's real, yeah. you have to test the real thing. Yeah. Yeah. You got to know the real thing. Hallelujah. Because if you know the real thing, you can spot a counterfeit real quickly. Real That's quickly. right. Really quickly. And since we know that the Lord is God, we can rejoice in Him. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know. That when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Is your hope in the Lord? Why are you serving the Lord? Is it so that you can come and get the crumbs that fall from the master's table from time to time? Or is it that there is something greater for you? And I'm looking for the greater thing. I'm looking for the greater thing. And therefore, if we hope for that which we see not, we do with patience wait for it. Romans chapter 5 is one of my favorite areas of scripture because it speaks to the change that the Lord wants in our lives and the things that he is wanting us to do. Just be patient with me. Because I believe the Lord is speaking to somebody. Amen. The Lord is ministering to someone. And if we can only give one, 
That's right. Come on. Amen. Come Heaven on. rejoices. Yes. Yes. Heaven rejoices. Yes. For the one. Yeah. Not Come those on. 90 and 9 satisfied Come on. who are still yeah. left out of the things that are on the table. We just want the crumbs from the table. Yeah. chapter 5 tells us verse 3 and not only so we glory in tribulation yes. also yes. knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Patience. and patience experience and experience hope oh, oh, oh. because hope make not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts yes. by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. How many of you can say today that the Holy Ghost has been given to you? You've been sitting for a few moments, Hallelujah. so I'm going to have you vote on your feet once more. Hallelujah. If you can say that that hope has been given to you by the Holy Ghost, yeah. stand up. Oh,
hope. Titus chapter 2. And then I'm going to try to finish. Looking for that blessing hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior. And I ask you, brothers and sisters, are you ready for that hope? Have you prepared yourself for that hope? There may be someone here today, and by your vote earlier, not everybody stood. So there may be someone here today My who Lord. wants to say yes to the Lord because I want that hope. Now, I realize that not everybody who is here who needs it is going to admit that they need it. I also realize that everybody here will not necessarily receive it today. Today. But I don't believe that anybody that the Lord has allowed me to minister to over the years is going to be lost if they believe. If they believe. The Bible says, and I quoted it earlier, if you believe, if you believe, then you will receive the hope, the assurance of your salvation. And today could be your day. Today is your day if you will surrender to the Lord and allow him to work in your heart and in your life. <laughs> well, I have enough material to hold us to me. <laughs> we want you in service on tomorrow. Because today you might not say yes to the Lord. Oh, you will. Amen. You wake up in the night season. You wonder why can't I sleep? Yeah. Why can't I rest? Why can't I do what I like to do when I'm done with the time past? The Lord is saying, I'm pulling you. I'm drawing you. I'm moving you. something else later on, and the Holy Spirit begins to minister to you, just say, yes. Yeah, yes. 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 You know, it's an easy word to say, yes. 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 Somebody will say, who are you saying yes to? You say, I'm saying yes to the Lord. Hey, yes. yes to the Lord. Yes. I will guarantee the next thing that comes out of your mouth will be tongues. Signifying that the Holy Spirit yes. is abiding in you. Yes. Yes. The Holy Ghost is coming to your life to transform who you are and to make you a new creature new. in Christ Jesus. Yes. If any man be in Christ, be in Christ. Yes. Yes. he, she, yes. is a new creature. Oh, that's hard.
Thank you. 